With graphics cards from both the green and red team getting more and more powerful each day, 4K gaming monitors are getting increasingly popular. Look, even the console peasants with their PS5 and their Xbox Series X can game in 4K. How can we PC master race lose to them, right? Today, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about 4K gaming monitors and how to choose the right one for you. Your mother no teach, I teach you la! Disclaimer, this video is brought to you by Gigabyte who has graciously sent over all these monitors for demonstration purposes. So I'll definitely be dropping some product placement. The knowledge that I will be dropping is applicable no matter what monitors you end up getting. Without further ado, let's get cracking. So firstly, what exactly is a 4K display? Alright, so a 4K display is basically four 1080p Full HD displays into one. Having a higher resolution means that you're gonna get a clearer image when consuming content on Netflix and such. And it's especially important when you have a bigger screen size because this means that you're gonna get a higher pixel per inch or pixel density. While 4K TVs have definitely been around for quite some time, if you've ever plugged in a generic 4K TV to do some gaming, especially on faster paced FPS titles, like Valorant or COD Warzone, you'll realize that the gaming experience can be a little bit underwhelming. But why? Because for gaming, you're gonna need some specific features that complement the performance of your gaming PC or even console. Something that gaming monitors do a lot better than your average 4K TV. Okay, so what are some of the features that you should pay attention to when picking your 4K gaming monitor? Well, firstly, we have to address the HO question of the size matter? When choosing the size of your monitor, viewing distance is a good way to helping you decide. And the rule of thumb is, the bigger your monitor, the further away you should sit. Unless you want to go blind lah. Something like this giant 48-inch Aorus FO48U is perfect for couch potatoes who game on consoles or even media PCs with a wireless setup. I recommend that you put at least 5 to 6.5 feet between this monitor and you. If your room is a little bit smaller, perhaps you can go for something like this 43-inch Aorus FV43U. But if you're more of a conventional desktop PC gamer like Limpe, holler to my CSGO uncles, Valorant Youngblood, AAA title elites out there, then you're probably shopping for a smaller monitor like this Gigabyte M28U or even the larger 32-inch M32U. But make sure that you get a desk that is slightly wider in depth to put at least 2-4 to four feet between your eyes and the screen so that your eyes don't scream like ice cream. Now you've probably heard the words TN, VA, IPS being thrown around quite a bit if you've done any sort of research into gaming monitors. And those are basically LCD panel types. I'm going to be ranking these different panel types based on three major categories, which are response time, color accuracy, and viewing angle. Now this is just a general guideline, so pay in mind that there might be exceptions to the rule, which is why you should definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out the individual reviews on these gaming monitors. Response time is measured in milliseconds and is very important for competitive gamers who play fast-paced games like Valorant or CSGO. A faster response time can improve your aim by reducing ghosting or motion blur, which is very obvious especially when dealing with recoil control or tracking an opponent. TN panels tend to have the fastest response time followed by VA and then IPS. And while IPS panels conventionally have higher response times, the tech has improved quite a bit. For instance, both the Gigabyte M32U and M28U are advertised with a response time of 1ms MPRT, which is the same as the Aorus FV43U that uses a VA panel. Color accuracy of your monitor determines how well it actually reproduces colors and shades on screen. While this is more important for people like me who deal with colors every day, and by people like me, I mean content creators, having a gaming monitor with bad color accuracy can misrepresent certain colors like making your reds look orange, potentially ruining immersion while gaming. There are many standards for color accuracy. In terms of gaming, I would just be concerned with sRGB, Adobe RGB, and DCI-P3. Do watch our Your Mother No Teach content creator monitor video to find out more. 
IPS panels are usually the best when it comes to color accuracy, which is why most professional monitors use IPS. VA panels are a close second and most have a leg up when it comes to contrast ratio compared to IPS, which can make images pop a little more. Finally, TN panels are, for the most part, the worst when it comes to color accuracy. Viewing angle is the maximum angle you can sit off-center from the center of your screen before you lose image quality. Normally, colors and contrast will begin to degrade the further you are away from the center of the screen, and this can ruin your gaming experience. IPS panels tend to have the best viewing angles, followed by VA and then TN. Before we move on to the next part, do take note that there are other types of technology being implemented into gaming monitors, such as the OLED screen on this Aorus FO48U. OLED panels come with individual pixels that can be turned on and off independently, giving us vibrant colors and true blacks because the pixels would be turned off completely. They also come with response times and viewing angles that rival IPS panels, though all that good stuff tends to come with a heftier price tag. When discussing about gaming monitors, we also cannot forget about HDR, which has gained quite a bit of traction over the years. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range, and Dynamic Range is basically defined by the steps between light and dark that a screen can display. High Dynamic Range expands on this by giving us brighter colors and higher contrast to make the images pop, which will increase our gaming immersion. There are many HDR standards out there with different requirements and it can get really confusing. Also, because HDR is very content dependent, your mileage may vary depending on which game you choose to play. Two of the most important HDR standards when it comes to gaming are Display VESA HDR400 and HDR10 and HDR10+. Monitors like the Gigabyte M28U and M32U comply with the VESA Display HDR400 standard and can achieve the required brightness levels for HDR content. But there are those that have even higher brightness levels to comply with HDR10 standards uh, like the Aorus FV43U and the Aorus FO48U. Although the latter is slightly darker at 900 nits, its OLED panel with darker blacks kind of compensate for that. Next, we need to talk about a little thing called refresh rates. A higher refresh rates will deliver us a better and smoother gaming experience because more frames are actually being rendered per second and this gives us a better motion tracking in game. This is also why powerful PC hardware is needed in high refresh rate gaming. Take a console like the Sony PlayStation 5. While it's capable of letting you game at 4K 120Hz, that is not exactly supported by all titles. Why? Because it's not a PC. Jokes aside, if you're gaming on a PC, 4K gaming at 100 frames per second is still a very bangsawan thing to do because you need to be someone like me who has access to not only one, but maybe two RTX 3090s or RX 6900 XTs. But there are definitely still some ways that you can optimize your in-game settings to prioritize FPS over visual quality. For instance, you can lower your texture, shadow, and ambient occlusion settings as those have a big impact on performance. And if that doesn't work, you can always try Nvidia's DLSS and AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution to gain more performance without losing too much visual quality. However, if none of the above worked, you can always game in a lower resolution or I don't know, get a new gaming rig. For that, your mother no teach, I also teach you lah. Anyways, all these four monitors can support 120Hz from your consoles and all of them except for the OLED FO48U support 144Hz from PCs. Finally, we have ergonomics. Now good ergonomics is demonstrated by a monitor that has good options when it comes to tilt, swivel and height adjustment so that you can set it up however you want to give you the most comfortable viewing experience that is very important during long gaming sessions. I got your back, bro. While it's definitely more prominent in work monitors, gaming monitors these days also come with great ergonomics as seen with the Gigabyte M32U. Its stand allows you to tilt, swivel, 
and adjust its height with a decent range. This is great and all, but if you have a monitor without all these options, then adding a monitor arm could be a great alternative option. Keep in mind that to use a monitor arm, you should always check for VESA mount compatibility as well as weight limitations. For example, monitor arms like the North Bayou NB-F90A only support 75 to 100mm mounts. So while we can definitely mount the Gigabyte M28U to that arm, it wouldn't support something larger like the Aorus FO48U. Firstly because of the weight limitation, but also because of the fact that this monitor uses a 300 by 300 mm VESA mount. For that, you can look at a wall mount instead, as the weight for monitors like the Aorus FV43U or the FO48U are just too much for regular monitor arms. In summary, the bigger the monitor, the bigger the VESA mount. That's what she said. And that is all for our Your Mother Notich 4K Gaming Monitor Edition. Thank you to Gigabyte Aorus for sponsoring this video once again, so feel free to check them out in the links below. Also, leave a comment down below if you have any questions regarding 4K gaming monitors and I'll try to reply to you not only there, but also at our comment section after this. Uh, don't forget to like and share uh, so that all your uncle, auntie all can see this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell and follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House crew and I will see you in the next one after the comment section. For this week's comment section, we have the AMD Radeon RX 6600 XT review. The first one comes from Slackroth and he says it's an awesome verdict and review but he's only aiming for the green team. Why you like that bro? Godwin Lim asked me if he just have a 1080p 60Hz monitor, would this GPU be an overkill? It won't be an overkill because you are definitely going to listen to me and go out and upgrade your monitor. Slime OS asked me to bring more celebrity to collab wall. Can, subscribe lah. More subscribers, more celebrity collab. Izami Gadget Senpai, come and say, always love your video bro. I also love your video bro, so we should collab soon, bro. In the wonderful world of Facebook, because obviously people are very gift fest. The first one is Ashraf Mokhtar. He says Shane look fit. Hey, don't simply angkat kena. I saw bulat. He said I fit. Sapie Abidin asked me, can I custom his new PC? No. Enrique La Brihong says that he's just watching for me. He cannot afford anything. Wow, don't be so cham can or not. It's okay. Abang will belanja you te tarik after this MCO is over. Darren Low says that he's very tempted with this GPU. Then buy la. Wait for what? Finally, Jun Fu Wong asked me 3060 or 6600 XT. Honestly, at this point, whichever card you can buy closer to MSRP is the better card. And that's all for our comment section this week. Huh? Leave more comment, although sometimes I don't have time to reply to you, but still leave. Because if your comment good, I will pick. And you lucky, like winning the lottery. I'll see you in the next one.